Are you ready for your booster shot? Because they're coming to a clinic near you, and very soon. That's what the Biden administration announced this week. Starting September 20th, all U.S. adults who received a two-dose vaccine will be eligible for an additional jab eight months from when they got their second one. Dr. Anthony Fauci told NBC Today why they've made this decision. First, what drove the administration to recommend these booster shots starting September 20th? Well, it was very clear, Andrea, that the, the protection that the vaccine was affording with regard to infection and mild to moderate disease was diminishing, particularly in the context of the very troublesome and highly transmissible Delta variant. Now vaccines are still highly effective at preventing hospitalizations and death, but the CDC released studies yesterday that showed the vaccine's effectiveness begins to slowly decrease over time. President Biden already told George Stephanopoulos on ABC that he and the first lady will be getting the boosters will be getting the booster shots. But this decision to offer a third precautionary dose to Americans when the majority of the planet still hasn't received even one has drawn a lot of criticism from some in the science community. Earlier this month, the World Health Organization even called for a moratorium on booster vaccine shots because of ongoing global disparities. So far, more than 80% of doses globally have gone to high and upper, in, upper middle income countries who have less than half of the world's population. Without, without as many people as possible being vaccinated here and abroad, mutations will arise. And for what it's worth, it seems more Americans are taking note. More than a million doses were administered just today, according to the White House. That's the one million a day reported. That's the first one million a day reported in nearly seven weeks. It comes as states with low vaccination rates have been seeing overwhelming surges. Mississippi had to open its second field hospital to handle the spike in COVID patients. And state officials in Alabama said they have no ICU, ICU, ICU beds left. Unfortunately, there's nothing right now that says this is going to get any better. I'm staring into the abyss and I don't see the bottom. Those sobering words come from a state that had to throw out 65,000 vaccines this month that expired without any takers. So how should the U.S. handle its vaccination campaign at this stage? Do we really need the booster shots? And how do we answer the moral questions of tossing out vaccines and giving boosters while other countries are desperately in need? Joining me now to discuss this is NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar. Dr. Azar is also an assistant clinical professor at NYU Langone Medical Center. Dr. Azar, great to see you. Thank you for being here. So are booster shots going to be necessary? Do we need them? Well, that's really the million dollar question. Um, you know, the it appears that the Biden administration has has you know answered that and and said yes, we do, and and we need them sooner rather than later. Um, you know, I, I have to admit, I was a little bit surprised by uh, the reaction and some of the blowback that the, that the decision uh, triggered today. Um, you know, I usually like to start this conversation by saying that boosters are not always inevitable, but a series of shots to achieve the greatest immunity um, is not unprecedented. We have examples of this in, let's say, the hepatitis B vaccine, the MMR. Those are all given a series. We know that we need more than one or two shots to achieve a maximal response. On the other hand, an example using tetanus or you know, the Tdap, that's given as a booster every 10 years because immunity wanes. And I think that the biggest question here for the scientists is why are we seeing um, a rise in hospitalizations uh, and particularly a, a, a higher percentage of hospitalizations in breakthrough cases or in the vaccinated? Is it because immunity is waning or is it just because of the transmissibility of the, of the Delta? And I don't think we really have the answer to that yet. Mm. What I'm getting from the messaging from CDC, Dr. Walensky and, and the Biden administration is that they've kind of looked ahead and telescoped what happened in Israel. And Israel's data shows that Pfizer's effectiveness dropped to 55 percent to protect against severe disease if you were vaccinated in January versus April. And we always know that we're a couple of months behind Israel. And I really think that this move 
is to get ahead of what they think is inevitable. Because if mm. you look at the data right now, it's ridiculous for anyone to think that people who've been fully vaccinated needs to be boosted. You're protected from hospitalization, you're protected from death, you don't need to be boosted. But they're saying, you know what, in a month, it might look different. And I think they want to be prepared for that inevitability, Jonathan. Doctor Dr. Azar, I want you to re repeat that number when you were talking about Israel in terms of the, the waning effectiveness, because I missed that number. Yeah, they their data, which, you know, the data from Israel was always, um, was scrutinized a little bit because I, I it, it doesn't appear that um, that it was analyzed to its, to its full degree right away. It was mm -hmm. the preprint and all of that stuff. But essentially what they showed, and that, by the way, they're almost exclusively Pfizer, and they have a very different medical system there where they can track people sort of very centralized. So they mm -hmm. have a really, really good data. It's almost like a real world experiment, if you will. And they essentially found that the protection against severe disease dropped from over 90% to 55% in individuals ah. who had been vaccinated in January versus in April, suggesting that there was a diminution in efficacy or in effectiveness the further away you got from vaccination. However, an important point though, is that the majority of the people who did get sick were older over the age of 65 and did have weakened immune systems. So it's not like they were necessarily seeing all younger people um, you know, where, where this severity was, was manifesting, but nonetheless, that was their data. And I think a lot of the decision that we made here was based on that plus our own data. Right. And I'm glad, I'm glad you, you, um, reiterated that because I'm wondering if, whether the, the, the booster shot, the third shot will last. And I bring that up because CDC director, uh, Walensky said today that Americans may not need yearly COVID-19 booster shots, suggesting that a third shot may sufficiently strengthen the long-term protection of Pfizer or, or Moderna vaccines. Dr. Azar, um, one thing that I'm keeping my eye on is the FDA, FDA approval of the Pfizer vaccine. And I'm wondering what should Americans take from that? Once the, the FDA approves the vaccine, what will that change in terms of how we relate to the, we relate to the virus, but also how we relate to the medical system as a result? Well, look, I mean, I, I think that full approval um, will have consequences um, and in, in a good way, if you are on the vaccination side, um, you know, a, a little aside is that I, I, I personally know of some uh, healthcare uh, colleagues of mine, not physicians, um, who, who are pretty clear that they're probably not going to continue working if, they're, if the vaccine is mandated, which it, of course it is, we know in, uh, in New York City for healthcare workers now. Um, you know, I, I think that having it fully approved is going to move the needle for a lot of the people who are on the fence, um, who were waiting for this to happen, either because they feel more secure now or because they think, well, I just, if I wanna work, I need to have the vaccine. Um, and I think it'll enable and facilitate, you know, the ability of businesses to make it a condition of employment um, if it's fully approved. And, you know, to your point, the lead in there with Dr. Walensky saying that she doesn't know if we're going to need any more shots after this. She was also very clear in her interview with Savannah this morning that we just don't know. You know, we don't know if COVID is going to be, if the vaccination is going to be like flu, um, where we will need to change it because of strains every year. Um, it would be wonderful if, if a third shot was all we needed, but I think it's way too soon to be able to say that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And you know, Dr. Azar, the, the, the most important words you just said from a, a, a good point of view is, we just don't know. We should be very humble in how we approach this virus because it's brand new and we're all learning uh, as we go along. Dr. Azar, thank you very much for coming on.